So how did you start using wah pedals? What was your first introduction to all that? Because like you're a classically trained violist, an acoustic yeah. violist, you're a viola professor, and then started messing with electrics. What was your introduction to wah? Well, actually, I had a, um, before I had the wah, I had a talk box, interestingly enough. And it seems, uh, you know, that a wah is more sophisticated or, or, or a, not not as sophisticated as a talk box to use, but the talk box was cool there, of course, as you directly shape the uh, the sounds, you, know, you, you shape the vowels with your mouth directly, and with the Y, you shape them with your foot. And uh, so I played around with that talk box quite a bit. It was one of those old ones that has a, a you know, separate preamp and so if you turn that up too high, you know, you have the thing in your mouth, you could knock your teeth out. It was one of those really scary ones. So I, in the meantime, I got a much, uh, I, I got uh, one of the modernized talk boxes. But in any case, then I got a, a an old crybaby wah and, um, you know, I started playing with that quite a bit. And it, um, the thing I noticed there, that, that was, oh gosh, 1997, I think, or 98 or something. And um, that that one had a little bit of a problem that it would pick up radio interference. Um, and so so the very first time I took it out in public, I played uh, a concerto I wrote with an orchestra. And during this like wah, beautiful passage, I was playing with a wah pedal you could hear like beautiful music for the two of us from the you know local easy listening station and that was it was pretty funny like it came through with it um but now the newer crybabies don't um you know they they've shielded them better so you don't you don't have that issue anymore and the other um issue on um on that one was also that when it was even when it wasn't in use even when it was off if it was part of the signal chain it noticeably degraded the rest of the plane and now they they have this bypass in them so i think all all of the ones you can buy now have a bypass in them so that you don't um uh so so you don't you don't get a lesser sound overall and so uh, about, I don't know, 12 years ago, I bought myself this full tone, full tone Clyde Deluxe, uh, wah pedal. And that, this, that, that one is just amazing. It just has super beautiful sounds. Um, so, uh, I use that, uh, really extensively. I started really messing with it. Um, a lot like on a daily basis and then um a few years ago i you know fell in with these questionable characters matt and chuck uh, i don't know you stay away from people like that um but uh, they had these uh, helix floor uh units with built-in was that you could edit and um and that that's what i've actually been using ever since um, and on the helix, uh, you can, so you can edit directly on the box itself. And I admit, I have never once done that. I have only used the HX edit software. Uh, you can attach the, uh, you can attach the helix to a computer with a USB, like a printer cable. And then there's something called HX edit and you can change the parameters. And what's really cool there is you can actually see how different kinds of wah are created. So like on this full tone Clyde, uh, I don't know if you can see this here. It has three types. It says whacked, Jimmy and shaft. And you know, it kind of, it's kind of mysterious. Like, well, you know, they sound pretty different from each other, but how, how do they achieve that? And I HX edit, you can see now uh, it's actually not that complicated. The the heel position, um, you know, as gives you the lowest frequencies, 
and that 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 particular um, setting has and the toe position gives you the highest frequencies and you can adjust how much they are. So if you like, I tried um, just for fun going to the most extreme, like 20 hertz to, uh, to 2000 or something like that. And the, uh, the heel just sounds like a thunk and the toe sounds just like a mosquito. And so obviously you're not never going to go quite that extreme, but if you make it really narrow, you get this wah, 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 that kind of sound. You can make it wider and um, get quite a different sound. So you can make uh, a lot of a lot of noticeably different effects um, using the wah pedal. And uh, the Helix floor has this built-in expression pedal, but you can also buy a separate one and um, and use that. Um, and so what interested, what's always interested me, especially after using the talk box, is the sort of the way you can get an equivalence to a, a, a sound shape you make with your mouth and the sound shape you make with your foot uh, playing a wah or a trombonist using a plunger or a um, trumpet or using a, a you know mute. Um, they get a very similar effect using totally different methods. And I, I always like sort of translating them. So obviously the word wa is an onomatopoeia. So it, um, you know, it's somewhat on a basic level, it sounds like wa. So, um, so this episode is brought to you by the letter W, uh, because you, it, it, there are so many different words starting with W, and you can actually, you can actually make them, um, you can shape those letters or, or those words. Uh, so if you say "wow" or "way" or "what," uh, you can, you can actually work on making your viper or whatever instrument you're playing sound like that word even though you're not using a you know talk box and in fact i've even tried going into different dialects so i take a a sentence like uh, you, know, you know why would i and just imagine people with in different dialects saying like why would i or why would i and you know you, you actually change the parameters on your helix. So why, why would I has a much narrower difference between the low and high frequency than why would I, which has, um, and then, and then you also have the speed at which you go from heel to toe. So even if you have a sort of a drawn out why, it can be why or why, you know, and, and the, and all those differences, it's actually, um, you can sort of get lost in a, you know, sort of a, a rabbit hole of experimentation with it. And then, um, then of course there are all kinds of things like with the bow, if you put the bow, uh, over the fingerboard, you get higher, uh, more high frequencies and, or if you play very lightly, so you can, play super lightly, but have the pedal way down in heel position in a low frequency and you get sort of this, this contrast. And then there, are, um, I mean, I can go on and on about, about all these things, but there are also interesting things. Like if you say the word, wow, you tend to say, wow, you get, you get louder and higher, uh, but you can also, wow, wow, you can get lower in pitch or quieter, or, um, you know, even if we say, just simply we say wa, um, you know, in, for example, in German, the word for ear is oa, is O-H-R, but it's, it's like wa, except that the emphasis is on the beginning. So oa versus wa is, a, you know, is a very similar thing with your foot, but then with your, your bow, you would have a different stroke. So 
in any case, that's that's the sort of thing I do. And this uh, demo reel, uh, I I am going to share later uh, with different uses of why I demonstrate sort of a lot of the different um, ways I use wah pedals. And yeah, we're going to watch this video that you sent me that's going to have some excerpts from the Denon Zone concerto and then uh, from your concertos. Um, yeah. You want to try to set any of these clips up so people will have an idea of what they're watching and maybe what techniques you're using in these clips? Yeah, so uh, Joe Denon Zone wrote um, this fabulous concerto and I made sort of a studio recording of it in a video right here at home in front of this green screen. Um, and so he, uh, he has, uh, sort of a lot of like metal styles and jazz styles, um, in there. And so in his concerto, you can hear me playing, uh, the, you know, very heavy distortion, uh, with a wah and, and sort of jazz style with a wah and, um, and, and just see how vastly different um, those sound. I would like to mention that when I made that um, recording, I was still using this full tone wah. And uh, then, and the, the, I, because it was a studio recording, I was just at home, I also did the effects through Pro Tools. Like I just, I, okay, everything's gonna be clean. Might as well just make it, you know, absolutely flawless, no humming and buzzing and all that. Um, and then my concerto, uh, there, I wrote this Viper concerto, uh, and that excerpt uh, is also a studio thing. I've played it with uh, string ensembles and orchestras too, but the studio recording is nice and clean and crisp. Um, and uh, there I... Um, yeah, there I have a, a very clean, you know, undistorted wah sound just to, to sort of get this like wailing, emotional um, uh, sort of violin sound. And then the last one is um, my concerto in F, which is named after Gershwin's concerto in F. But there I'm contrasting my wah with a, a trombone with a plunger. So, so you hear the trombone and then, um, then me kind of imitating that. And, um, so that's, that kind of, you know, has a, it, there's a broad range of what you can do with a wah pedal. <laughs>
if you're if you do the old fashioned thing like the full tone Clyde deluxe wah pedal plus um, you know a, a distortion pedal plus and and you hook them all together, um, obviously you're going to get very different sounds if you distortion plus wah or if you do chopping uh, with a wah pedal and so forth. And uh, one one thing to keep in mind. Um, whether you do it that way or or it's something like the Helix or um, a similar device, is that the, the order of effects really matters. So if you if you play if you play something and you reverberate that beautifully like a big hall, and then you apply wah to the reverberated sound, that's totally different from putting it through a wah and then reverberating the wah sound. Um, and I, I've been trying to think of analogies to it. I, I, I don't know if this kind of makes sense, but you, if you take a, if it's dark and you want to take a photo, you can simply turn a light on and take a photo, or you can take a photo with a flash. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, or you can add light uh, in Photoshop after, after the fact. I mean, you're adding light, but you're adding it at different stages. And so I, anybody who wants to mess with these things, I would, I would encourage them just really mess with it. Just, Hey, what happens if I press this button, you know, yeah, just switch things around and you'll notice pretty quickly how different the, how, how much difference it makes, what order they're in. Um, and and then also another another thing is that that's interesting on the helix it, it, is it has it, you can set how much of your own sound you get and how much of the uh, wah sound or how much of the octave sound or how much of the distorted sound so you can mix your own sound with um, you know uh, with the affected sound and so if you have wah and then reverb and but you set the reverb at 50 percent then it's um it's not entirely re reverberated and so forth so um these things are all um you know endlessly customizable which is why i have really fallen in love with this um helix and uh that's and then there are some other like like a quad cortex and uh, my students keep you know, every Sunday we have our electric strings parties and someone brings in yet a new toy um, or a new cool device uh, to look at. And so there are quite a few that that have uh, some yeah you know, and really great user interfaces um, as well. So uh, the other aspect that I kind of want to mention with not just the wah, but, but distortion and any, any effects. There's, uh, you know, criticism, classical musicians will level, you know, against like um, electric instruments is that, well, that's all gimmicky. And, you know, anytime somebody like, you know, if they make a viola joke, I think, well, maybe there's some truth to it, you know, cause I play the viola or, if if people say well classical music you know when it's performed in a boring way you know instead of just being insulted i kind of oh is there some truth to it and by the same token um we have to be careful not to let all these things become gimmicky like oh wow this is cool that's cool that's cool but really use them as expressive devices and one example is um I have a student named Sarah Schultz. You know Sarah uh, from uh, playing from the uh, Mark Wood Rock Orchestra campus. She's playing the Walton Viola Concerto on the electric. And the opening of that concerto, you know, it's a big romantic piece, and he never even dreamt that it would be played on an electric instrument. But a wah used carefully there really enhances the expressiveness of it. So if you really apply it as an expressive device and not just as a cool effect. And 
you know, you, you use these things, um, you know, to really, I, it sounds kind of corny, but to really look inside yourself and express what you need to use them as tools for that, then uh, I think that's, that's where they, um, they really get, um, you know, they really come on, come into their own. They become sort of instruments unto themselves or, or sort of supplements to the instrument. And um, yeah, it takes a lot of practice. And one more thing <laughs> I want to mention that one more or two more, sorry, I have two more things I want to mention to anybody, you know, sort of getting into this. One is practice. Well, if you're going to use pedals, practice use wearing the same shoes you're going to wear when you play in public, because um, they, they're. I mean, if you if you practice in big uh, hiking boots and then you go out on stage playing with a with high heel shoes, uh, you're going to, you know, obviously the result is going to be totally different, and. Not only that, I would also caution people against having like huge setups at home and then traveling with smaller setups that are slightly different and only, you know, sort of going through those the day before. I mean, if the setup you're going to use, if you travel somewhere to play, live with that for, for a week at least and just really, really, um, and every last little thing, the, exact angle um so uh, so that's one thing and the other is if you do the sort of old-fashioned thing of you know have buying a bunch of pedals and linking them together be sure your patch cables are all of the very highest quality because the rule of the weakest link definitely applies so you could play in the most beautiful hall with the greatest equipment and no, you know, no expense spared, but you have one little patch cable that's faulty. That defines the whole thing. It's kind of funny. Because, uh, so, you know, like some of them are, seem like a Mogami patch cable seems ridiculously expensive, but it really will do the, do the trick. Yeah, I know you spent a ton of time thinking about not only all these things, but how to teach these things. So yes. if you've got a, uh, if you've got some, you know, some lessons that you give to a person who's getting started with a wah, you know, how do you teach them to get the coordination between their right hand and their left hand and their right foot? Do you have some exercises for that? Yeah, I mean, in general, what I, you know, th there are two approaches I take that are almost opposite. One is I say, okay, let's see, like, try to define in your mind what you're after. So if you want this to sound like wah, 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 like that, all right, let's go for that, right? And you just work at it until it sounds like that. The other approach is to just, the opposite approach is just to mess with the equipment and see what it can do, you know, kind of leave it to, leave it to chance. And the coordination is definitely um, the main thing. You just, and it's the main thing with looping. It's the main thing with, um, and, and, and with, uh, and with the wah and with a whammy, but even, even with things like distortion, you know, if you turn distortion on and off at the wrong moment, the re the reverb from one note suddenly isn't distorted anymore. It sounds really off. So even that coordination is off, uh, is vital. So for the, for all these pedals, I actually have a, a rhythm in my mind when to press the pedal. So I'm playing da, 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 or something, but the pedal is going da, 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 is, or, da, 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 da. I have exactly like, okay, one sixteenth value after I play that note, I'm pressing this. And with the wah, um, there are just so many things to coordinate and it's not just your foot and your arm, it's your vibrato and your, uh, you know, the bow pressure and on and on, all these things work together. And so you just play one note at a time and really try to get it right. And one and another, 
you know, and then one phrase at a time. And I found that at first people try the one, it just sounds totally off. Um, but just after, you know, after an hour, they actually, you know, because what, what the habit people generally have is go heel toe, heel toe, leg like, like that really fast, but kind of go in the middle and then wobble it a little and then over and then, you know, really just like you don't use your full bow for every stroke and to treat it with the same refinement as as your bow or your vibrato that's that's where it really is like um yeah you have your bowing technique and your left hand technique and your foot technique so you, you really have increased it by 50 percent. and you know it is kind of sad that string players generally do nothing with their feet you know that it's kind of wasted uh but no more yeah, we had these whole two limbs that we weren't even using. And like, you're also a pianist and I'm sure you play pipe organ. My mom is a pipe organist. Like they, they, they're they doing three or four things with their hands yeah. and both feet are going and like, we can do that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's really cool adding electronic effects. I mean, I've act, I, long, a hundred years ago or so, I messed around a lot with um, Hammond organs and you know, you'd have the Leslie speaker spinning. And if you play faster than it spins, like the, the effect you get there is really amazing. And, and and just the relationship between your vibrato and your bow speed and your, um, your pedal is really, you know, it's really fascinating. So even, even with a, a classical, with an Amish classical violin, uh, you know, you're just playing um, just just coordinating your your right and left hand there's so many factors there um you know if you sometimes i'll tell people i'll play as as expressively as you can with no vibrato and then add vibrato um and then it's it's quite different from just assuming oh yeah i need to vibrate all the time and with the wah pedal, you can do something similar. You can say, just imagine this with wah, but don't allow yourself to use it. It's like, like that, and wah, 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 wah. like suddenly it um, comes in there. And then the whole thing of singing, this is an age old thing, you know, sing what you want to play before you play it, right? That's, I mean, they've been doing it. That's, thousands of years, I don't know, thousands of years of music teaching. Um, and the same thing goes for, for using a wa, like shape the word with your mouth or the, the, the sort of not word necessarily, but the sound shape. Wow. 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 Yeah. Just, just try that. And you'll notice how equivalent that is. And, and you, you start translating what you do here to what your foot does. Oh, yeah, okay, like that. You, you, um, so you can learn it. And I guess another thing is it's, you know, it's uh, people can easily think, well, the pedal, wah pedal is just sort of a little gimmick I'm adding to my playing. But that's as if you've only played pizzicato and you think of the bow as a gimmick you're adding. Um, you know, it's like, it's a completely different thing. It's, it's yet another factor, uh, and it takes an enormous amount of skill and refinement if you really, really want to do it right. And it's also things like chopping. It's amazing how different they sound once you add a wah and, you know, chopping just dry and then chopping with a wah, chopping with uh, distortion and then wah or wah and then distortion, all those things, um, they really change it. And you get, um, you know, you get sounds that you really didn't realize you could get. So. Well, man, thanks for joining us and sharing all the wisdom that you've got on, on wah pedals. Where can people find your music? Where can they find uh, where you're going to be playing? If they want to come study with you, how do they find you? Well, if you want to come study with me, I'm at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, and we run a 
uh, degree program uh, for un undergrad and graduate, and, uh, including doctoral degrees in electric strings. So you can come here and, and actually get uh, degrees in performance and literature or um, music ed. Uh, and we have great music technology programs here as well. And uh, if you want to uh, read more about me, you just go on rudolfhaken.com um, and you can, you, can, um, you can read my bio and see all my beautiful photos and all that kind of stuff. And on YouTube, uh, you can find uh, quite a few videos. And um, yeah, so I'm, actually I do need to be better about uh, listing upcoming events. <laughs> Because I have quite a yeah quite a, yeah I have one um, but uh, yeah and I I play um, overseas quite a bit too so I I like this last fall I was in uh, Tokyo and Tbilisi Tbilisi being the capital of the Republic of Georgia um, and uh, so I'm going back to Japan this um, this May and then. Uh, sometime this year, we'll perform a mass I wrote in Croatian, uh, and it'll be performed in Croatia. I just finished this mass, and I'm still orchestrating it and all that. Uh, so I have quite a few things, and uh, yeah, some concerts. So I'll, I'll list them. You have inspired me to list them on my site um, under upcoming events. Um, all right. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you, man. It's a pleasure to hang out with you again, and hopefully yeah. we'll get a chance to be in the same room again before too long. But yeah, thanks for joining us and, and teaching us about WAH.